So now let's have a look at foreign assets and liabilities. And what I first of all want to do is split them into uh, something that's nothing to do with money, so non-monetary assets or liabilities, and monetary ones, things that are based on money, monetary assets and liabilities, such as loans, could be debtors, could be creditors, anything that's based on money. Non-monetary assets, of course, could be things like non-current assets, PPE, etc. Now, with non-monetary assets, generally, if we keep them at cost minus depreciation, if we follow that rule, then all we do is when we buy it, we translate it at the historic rate. Okay. Now, if it's a monetary asset, such as loans, well, loans you're going to have to pay interest on. And you're going to have to pay back the capital, aren't you? Okay, so the capital amount, what we do is we retranslate that at the year-end rate. But the interest has been happening all over the year, so we retranslate that at the average rate. Okay? Now, as we're translating at the year-end rate here, what we will get each year is a difference. You know, one year you divide by four, next year you divide by five, whatever, you're going to get a difference. That difference simply goes to the income statement. Okay. Now, on to the non current assets back here again. What we might have, remember, is a revaluation as well. If properties are revalued, and remember, these are going to be foreign properties, then what we'll have to do is translate at the date of revaluation okay that's pretty much it really so i don't want to go on too much more about it just remember it's split in between non-monetary and monetary ones it's the monetary ones because after all this is foreign exchange we're talking about it's the monetary ones that we do translate so the monetary ones do get translated and we translate them if it's in a balance sheet item, we translate it at the year end. If it's an income state item, we translate it at the average rate. They're generally balance sheet items. And because you're translating them every year, then you're going to get a different figure every year. And that difference goes to the income statement. Non-monetary ones, you generally don't translate. You translate it, first of all, at the historic rate. OK, when you first buy it and that's it, you don't have to do anything else about it. Uh, but sometimes if you do follow the revaluation policy, then you have to revalue it each year. And obviously it's a foreign asset. So we have to use the exchange rate at the date of revaluation. All right. Yeah, as I say, I don't want to go on too much more about it because I think it's better if we actually do some questions.